What I have done actually is ordered a new set of wheels. And then you come in with this DP, look at this. And what you do is you cut off a bit of this new exhaust system just sounds so nice. Welcome back to my BMW E90 M3 project. I bought this car for our cheap versus expensive sports sedan challenge and because I had blown almost all my budget on the car, I only did a few mods to make it better before we hit the track to see which car would be the better of the two. And it was going all so smoothly until... Oh, what happened there? I felt like... Uh-oh, we just spun. This motor's dead, guys. This motor's dead. And indeed, it was dead with a spun rod and main bearing, but that didn't stop me. I sourced a used engine and went even further with the upgrades to build my ultimate E90 M3. Now, despite all that, I still maintain the BMW E90 or E92 M3 is one of the best values on the market if you don't have what happened to me. These cars are simply amazing. V8 sounds so good. The DCT transmission, amazing. It feels sporty and when you put, you just wanna cruise or sit and stop and go traffic, you just switch it into auto mode and it really performs like an automatic transmission. And the car is just so comfy. The interior, everything is just at like such a high premium level that I don't think BMW does as well anymore. The TE37s, although a classic look, weren't a very popular choice uh, from you guys for this vehicle. And I tend to agree. I don't think the color was the right choice especially it does clash quite a bit with the silver. And truthfully, uh, there are cars that can pull the TE37 off very well. This car, however, has to be really, really low, I feel like, to give the TE37 a proper look and go, and it is not. So what I have done actually is ordered a new set of wheels, which I will show you soon. I'm very pumped for them. I think they will kind of bring this car back to uh, a more OE-esque look, but still give it that like performance look. And as for the matter of ride height, man, this car has had a rough go. Uh, originally, I had some sprint springs on it with the stock shocks and they worked really well and I thought the, the ride height was really good. Then we swapped them out to Dynan springs with a set of uh, Bilstein shocks and those shocks from what I read on the internet, do raise the vehicle a bit. So as you can see right now, I don't love the ride height. I would love for it to be lower, especially up front. The gap up front is it's quite noticeable. In the back here, it's not bad. I have been assured that once I drive this car and the springs settle, this ride height will come down a little bit and it will look better. Now, BMWs aren't exactly known for their reliability, but thanks to Carly, I'm gonna be able to figure out what has gone wrong with this M3 because believe it or not, I drove it the other day for the first time and I got a bunch of errors that came up and despite this car giving me some type of information, so I had like a DSC malfunction, a flat tire monitor, a bunch of other codes, I don't exactly know what's going on. However, with Carly, I can plug in their scanner and load up their app and I can check their diagnostics to see what is going on. And you can see we have a bunch of errors. The dynamic stability control, which is what I think is the main issue is showing DSC, steering angle sensor plausibility. That actually makes sense because I did notice while driving this vehicle that the steering wheel is crooked and that is because this car does need an alignment because we had the engine out, I replaced a bunch of the control arms. Now you'll also notice we have uh, an error with the roof and that's this interior lights at the front. So that likely means that we have a light out and for the engine, we have throttle valves initialization. I actually did change the throttle actuators on this very engine, so it likely just needs a quick recalibration. One of the other really neat features of the Carly app is it offers you coding, and with BMW, you get a lot of coding options. So we can go into here, for example, and change the locking access, 
And you can see there's a whole host of them here. For example, comfort start that I can have on or off. So lots of really cool customizable options for your BMW through this app. There's also a bunch of other really cool options, repair guides, intelligent predictions, service and maintenance that you can keep track of, customization, which is what we just did with the coding, and things like used car mileage check. So this actually gives you the ability, for, for example, if you were buying a vehicle to plug the Carly uh, scanner in and to see if it's been tampered with. So as you can see with this vehicle, we've got all green, so it hasn't been tampered with, which is a very good thing. So as you can see, the Carly app and scanner are a great way to save a bunch of money and visits to the mechanic shop. So if you wanna give this a try, click the link in the description and use the code Speed Academy for 15% off. And if you're actually curious to find out whether the steering angle sensor is an alignment issue, stay tuned to the end of the episode where I am gonna take this for alignment and then we'll reset everything and see if it's worked or not. Now, if you recall the previous video series on this, I did a whole bunch of upgrades to the suspension and I did upgrade the brake pads, but but what I didn't do were the rotors because I thought they were good and they were gonna last. It turns out on track, they weren't great. And now further looking at them, they are very worn and they've got the dreaded lips. So I turned to our friends over at FCP Euro and bam, I have a whole new complete brake setup. And FCP Euro does it great because first of all, they offer a lifetime replacement warranty. So now that these rotors have been purchased through them, if I wear them out, guess what? I buy new ones, I pack these up and send them back. They are that good. Same with the brake pads, it's kind of crazy. But what I really like about FCP Euro is their website, it's super easy to just like navigate, pick parts and whatnot. Like this was a complete set. So I don't have to pick the rotors individually, the pads, the sensors, these like little set bolts for the uh, rotors. You know, everything is a complete kit. So I'm able just to put it in my cart and order it up and we are done. DP, you gotta give it to BMW. The brake system, well, that was a breeze, right, DP? Come nice. on. Yeah, no, that was pretty it, right? good, that was pretty good. Right. Uh, the one thing to note is, so I am using Zimmerman rotors, which are the OE replacement for uh, the M3. They're basically, you know, unbranded BMW. If you wanted to buy the BMW stuff, it is way more expensive. There's not a lot of applications for the M3, so the Zimmerman rotors are the way to go. And as for the pads, uh, Techstar is also an OE supplier for BMW. I'm curious to try those out because we were running the HP Streets on this car from uh, Hawk, and they were good, nice and aggressive. So I'm, I just really wanted to try out what an OE spec pad would be like, and if it's as good as OE. Jumping into the engine bay here, and I'm gonna say it again, man, DP. Look, look at this beautiful carbon fiber in this engine bay. We've got the Aventuri uh, plenum with the intake, the Dynan little strut bars here. Oh, it's just so beautiful. But we all know BMWs have what is an oil cap curse. They always leak and then they always run down your valve cover. And guess what? 
make a mess. And this one is no different. However, the, uh, the brains over at NRW Design, these guys, man, they just continue to come up and innovate awesome parts for the S65. By the way, these are their valve covers on here. And they have sent me over their new billet oil cap for this engine, and it is a brilliant design. Essentially what it is, it's billet aluminum, and it is going to stop and ensure that there are no leaks, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna install this right into here. So once this is in place now, I take the top off here, and look, you can fill perfectly without any spills, because they have added Look at this little add-on right here. Bam. And then you come in with this DP. Look at this. A screw in funnel. Oh. oh, oh, and I've just dropped the, the top cap there. That is so good. So brilliant. Yeah, that's genius. You know, just no fill, no mess, no fuss. And then you take this off and I would put the cap back on here, which I'll show you in a second, but I got to reach underneath the car now. Thankfully, no damage on that cap. And this now truly is going to be a leak-free solution. And on top of that, man, the billet just looks really good. So if you're looking for anything S65 related, NRW Design is certainly the place to check out. While everybody on the internet is straight piping their cars, making them sound more obnoxious, I am actually going to do the opposite here. And I'm gonna remove these Dynan mufflers and put an OEM muffler back on here. That's right, I am that crazy. And the only reason I'm doing this, this is a test. I love the way these sound. However, I want more induction noise. That Eventuri carbon intake plenum and the uh, air box sounds so good. I'm just trying to get more of like that DTM sound. And I figure, Taking these off, going back to an OEM setup might bring that up because these do sound pretty loud at full throttle. So these actual mufflers have been on here for quite some time. I'm looking at some of these bolts, DP. They're not like rotted, but they are rusty. So let's see what we're gonna do here. Oh, like butter. That's a thing. German cars may blow up $15,000 engines. They might throw check engine lights all the time, but what they don't do is they don't rust so at least you can fix them and drive them for a long time well, you have whereas the japanese cars <laughs> man they just rot out they just always rot out don't they especially up here the you southern climate guys the japanese cars are pure perfection but up here this is a reason to go german up here no rust Woo. okay look at that piece man these mufflers really when you look at them from dining like this thing's been on here, I think over six, seven years. Like this is OG dining stuff and still in great condition. The sound out of these is, is really, really nice. And I should really mention one thing. There is added extra noise coming from this Evolve midsection here. We do have two high flow cats, but the primary cats on the stock system are gone and resonators here. So that's why I do have an increase in sound. If this was completely stock, with those Dyna mufflers, then it'd be much quieter as well. So I'm hoping with a stock muffler and this whole setup, we're gonna have what I think is the perfect like in-between. So here we have the stock E90 or E92 muffler. And as you can see, the exhaust tips have been removed because the one thing I really hate about these mufflers is the look of the exhaust tips. You can see they have this like this rolled edge that's chrome. And oh, I went on the internet, I was like, maybe you can buy replacement tips. But then I realized what you do is, for an E90 at least, is you get the E92 muffler that has longer exhaust tips. And what you do is you cut off a bit of the, the, the outside of it, as you can see like this. And then what you're left with is a nice, like flat edge, open edge that looks pretty good in my opinion. I had uh, JP over at Stripping Tech Cerakote these and I think they're gonna look really good and all I have to do is like rivet these back on but man that to me is so much better than having an exhaust tip that looks like this right like look at the difference it's it's quite remarkable the only downside is you know if you sit here and you look in you can see this pipe but who's gonna do that oh there it is that's better you can see I gotta give it a little bit I gotta line it up and then give it little push there all right that's looking good i'm satisfied with that did you guys notice too 
black rivets, everybody, black. I didn't go with the chrome ones. I talked a big game and sure enough, it bit me. I ran out of the black rivets and all I got were are these like small little guys left. I don't know where everything went, but let's see. I don't know even though if this is gonna work. Yet. Okay, it's holding, but oh! How bad that looks, DP. Yes. What have I done? What have I done? Ugh. A little black paint on there, you're good to go. Interesting thing to note, this has me worried already. Look at the weld right along here. And it goes all the way down here. It goes all the way around in here. Someone's opened this up and I did read online that there are mods that you can do to make these things louder. And I'm kind of worried this has been done on this muffler now. So man, I may have screwed myself here, but let's see. At this point, I'm too far committed. We're putting it on. It's not a huge job. So let's see how this goes. Here I was talking about how easy it is to work on this car. And man, trying to put this muffler back up here. They have these hangers that are tucked right underneath here. DP, if you come over this way, yeah, you might be able to see it. This guy here, and it's just like, Damn near impossible. Uh, I just got it in there. I did all the hard work off camera and now I have to try to like slide in here. Thankfully I've got this tool and I can try to like push it on there, but there we go. It just doesn't make sense why they would do this. It's almost like you gotta pull the, uh, the exhaust off to try to get these, or sorry, the, the bumper off to try to get these freaking hangers in there. I have to say, I'm pretty proud of the exhaust tips. Man, they look really, really good for the OEM tips. Like these almost look like dining tips. I think they stick out, you know, the, I, I had them actually lengthened, I think by like 10 mil over the E90 ones. So they just stick out just a hair further, but I, I really like them. And we will fire this up in a moment so you guys can hear what it sounds like because I am anxious to do that. But first, I think it's time for a wheel reveal. You already know what tires we are running. The Extreme Contact Sport O2s from Continental right here. And for wheels, man, I went back and forth, back and forth, trying to find my ideal style for this car. And because this car is gray and it has a lot of like the blackout chrome now, I decided on another set of Apex VS5 RS wheels, this time in black. I truly love the design of this. This is somewhat of an OEM plus for me. If you guys know the style 359, I think M wheels that come on these cars, like the competition uh, coupes, they look really, really good. And this is just to me like an evolution of it. Oh, I can already tell you this color combo with these wheels on this car looks phenomenal. I'll show you in a second, but the OEM Plus Touch is a set of BMW center caps. These are the Apex ones and they look really good actually. They they would finish off the wheel in a very nice manner as you can see here. Let me try to, I don't wanna really pop them in, but you can see they would look really good in terms of like the aftermarket look, but from a perspective of OEM, look at this, you can't beat it. And of course the Apex wheels actually allow for BMW center caps. So what do you guys think? A match made in heaven, black wheels, uh, the black trim on the gray car. I, I love it, I absolutely love it. I think it is the perfect wheel choice for the setup. Now, for those of you wondering, this is a 18 by 10 and a half plus 22 wheel with a 275, 35, 18 Extreme Contact Sport 02. Up front, we have an 18 by nine and a half plus 22 with a 265, 35 18 tire usually the the hot setup is the 265 up front with a 285 in the rear however continental doesn't make a 285 35 uh, 18 so i went with the 275s and truthfully like i'm not mad about it it doesn't look that bad the only thing i hate right now is this damn gap the wheel gap everybody so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna drive this car for the next week and if it doesn't come down enough then 
I'm gonna have to figure out a solution because it's just, this gap is gonna bug me too much. And it is now several days later, I've been driving this car daily. And as you can see, it has actually leveled off and drop down to what I think is a modest ride height. It's certainly not super low. The front, I would still like a little bit lower, but I'm gonna leave it as is because this car rides so well right now. Once we take it for a ride, I'll explain it, but I am in love with it all over again. And no, I didn't forget to give you guys the exhaust note sound. So let's fire this thing up. As you just heard, the exhaust note I think is actually very much more subtle than with the Dyn and mufflers. It still has that bark and that rasp up top when you really give it high revs, but down low, like this, this is really nice. I love this. This is like a deep tone and it just like has that perfect V8 sound in my opinion. I really, really like it. So this is certainly a mod worthwhile doing. Now the real question is, I'm still wondering, has there been an exhaust mod done to this muffler? And there is a way to find out here. And here we have it, folks. We are going to try a camera and probe here to see if there has been any type of modification done here. And really there's two mods. Some people, what they do is they basically take the uh, exhaust system on the outside and they straight pipe it straight through just to the tips. And then there's like this perforation mod where there are perforated holes in the, in the center chambers, the ones that have been cut out here. And what they do is they cover those perforated holes up. So there's no you know potential for sound reduction. I've never gone into the belly of the beast here. This is kind of odd. Oh no, look, you can see right there. So that right there, so the, the holes are still there. Let's see. The holes are still there and the perforation looks to be there. Interesting. Wow. Look at that. There's packing all over. So that's that's like, like your fiberglass packing. So it's there. So it certainly hasn't been removed. So I'm not exactly, again, not exactly sure, but usually what they do in these scenarios is all these, these perforated holes here are wrapped and covered up so when the exhaust travels through it uh, it doesn't perforate into the muffler and actually muffle so well this is a little inconclusive i don't know but i do like the sound so i think it's all win Okay, so the boys over here at Envy Auto just got the alignment dialed in. I've got the Carly app opened again, and I'm gonna clear all of the issues that are showing. And after that, Luke's gonna take it for a test drive, and when he comes back, we'll see if everything's clear or not. And 
and Luke is back from his test drive. He's just fixing the alignment just slightly because the wheel was just a hair off. I appreciate you for doing that, Luke. Thank you so much. The other thing is, uh, it looks like everything is good. The Carly app is showing good. So all the codes have been cleared, which means we have success. Back behind the driver's seat and listen. Oh, this car, everybody, I love it. I love it. It does have the BMW curse where you just don't know if an engine's gonna let go. But barring that, if you are a gambling man, then to me, E90X or E9X, I'll say, either the E92 or the E90 M3 is BMW perfection. Just ask Shredden from M539 Restorations. He knows these cars are just so special, so fantastic. The naturally aspirated Motorsports V8 put together with this seven speed DCT is just a match made in Motorsports heaven. And the chassis itself is so good. And just like, listen to the noises this thing makes like, Oh, oh, man, and that is just like partial throttle. Is it the fastest car in the world? No, but it doesn't need to be. This thing has soul, it's got character, it's got an 8300 RPM redline, the DCT shifts so nicely. It is just like such a well put together package. The interior is amazing. As you can see, I've got uh, two child seats in the back here. One for my daughter who's five and one for my son who's two and a half from Britax. Uh, shout out to Yuri over at the Straight Pipes. He put me onto this brand and they are fantastic. Super easy to install. Adjustment is amazing and both these seats are now set up. My son can grow into it. If you're in the market for some uh, some child seats like I am for your dad mobile, then uh, certainly check them out. But I digress. This car now with the suspension overhauled. Um, and, and let me just go back to what I have on here. These are Dynan Springs with uh, Bilstein shocks and a whole bunch of hard race arms and refreshed OEM BMW arms. And it is so tight. This thing feels 20% tighter than stock. Absolutely perfect in my opinion. Like if you want a sportier ride, those Bilsteins are amazing. And this car still retains its electronic dampening control. So win-win in that department. So let's throw this thing into M mode and just let this thing sing here. Oh, the downshifts, by the way, this new exhaust system just sounds so nice. Oh, it's, it's perfect. I can hear that plenum. Do you guys hear that? Like the bark of the plenum, the, like listen to that. Oh, it's so good. The exhaust is minimal sounding. What I really love about the exhaust right now is, watch this. So if I downshift it, See that? It has good sound, but it's not super loud. And when you get on it, oh man, it just sounds so good. I can hear the carbon plenum, which is what I wanted originally from the onset, is to have the carbon plenum sound great, and it really does. The downshifts, or sorry, the upshifts you can see are so crisp in M mode. The car just, it, it's such a motorsports grade experience driving this car. And then when you're done, you just, what you do is you just hit this and look. And now with this muffler that I've installed, it's so quiet and it cruises so nice. It's only when you really get up into the RPM is when you start hearing it. Like if I just tap into this thing right now, look, you guys probably can't hear it, but I, I hear more intake noise than I do exhaust, which is exactly what I wanted. So it kind of now has this dual purpose setup where it can be a quiet street car, and then when you want it to roar, it roars, and boy, does it ever. Let me give you guys another pull here, back into M mode. Let's go off the line. Oh, I've got traction control on, but oh. <laughs> like, yes, I don't know what to say. It, it's just, 
it stirs the soul and makes all the right noises. Like, li listen to this thing. It's just, it is to me like the epitome of BMW Motorsports perfection. And I will leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for watching. I certainly hope you've appreciated this episode. If you are in the market for a BMW, go buy the best example, okay? Do not buy the cheapest car because buying a cheap car is what ends up biting you in the long run. What you wanna do is buy the best example that you can afford and just listen to this thing. Oh, this is what you want. Just watch out for those rod bearings and main bearings, everybody. So we will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.